January 26th, Edward Law. Be brave enough to ask for help and caring enough to give it. Ed Law sat with a loaded rifle pointed at himself, his finger on the trigger. His self-described crazy, stupid, and wild life was about to end. Ed felt like this was his only way out. He was miserable, and he was finally going to escape. He felt out of breath, as if he had been running, not just slumped in a chair drinking. Running, running away like a scared kid. He had been scared all of his childhood. He called it growing up hard, but really, it was growing up scared. Now he was scared again, scared and embarrassed and ashamed. Asking anyone for help with his stupid life would expose him for the failure he was. But he was starting to wonder if giving up on his life hurt his pride just as much as admitting that he needed help. What if there was a better way than running away from the shame and the problems his wild life had caused? What if there was a better way he was missing out on? With the words, a better way, still running through his mind, Ed reached for another drink. Those words seemed familiar. He tried to think of what the rest of the words were, something about Jesus having a better way of life. In that moment, Ed remembered that the man he was buying a house from was some sort of Bible preacher. A guy like that might be able to help him. Ed took a deep breath and put the gun aside. Shaking, he stood up and gathered himself. He was going to give this a try. It was a little past three in the morning when Ed pounded on Joe Thomas's front door. Joe had met Ed a few days earlier when Ed submitted an offer to buy Joe's house. Joe had accepted Ed's offer. Now, Joe peeked out the door and he looked a little bit scared. Mr. Law, Joe said. Yep, that's me. I'm the guy buying this house. Ed knew his words were slurred. You gotta help me, man. Hey, what's the rest of that verse? Ed leaned in. You must know you're a preacher, right? Joe said, well, not exactly. Ed kept talking. The verse is something like, a better way, or he is the life. Joe, I'm done with my life. I'm either gonna end it, or I'm getting a new one. Now, Joe heard the panic in the man's voice. Despite his own nervousness, Joe opened the door and asked Ed to sit at the kitchen table. Joe opened a Bible to John 14, 6, and he told Ed, I'm pretty sure you're talking about this verse. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Joe read some other verses to help explain the new life that Jesus offers. Now, completely sober, Ed looked at Joe. I want this. I'm ready for the life Jesus can give me. Years later, Ed told that story and shook his head. He had almost missed out on that better way, but he had found hope, forgiveness, and a new life because he had made the decision to go find Joe. Ed's new life in Christ is not free of problems, but now he has God's strength and the support of other believers to help him face the problems. Ed now extends help to other people who struggle, just like Joe helped him. Ed's advice is always the same. Stop running, get help, talk to somebody, and get Jesus into your life. He is the better way. Psalm 71 says, O Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. What problems or habits are overwhelming your life? Talk to someone. Is someone asking you for help? How can you be available to them? Be brave enough to ask for help and be caring enough to give it. Hello, friends. I know you were moved by today's story, as was I, and I was trying to think about 
Ed and where Ed must have been uh, if he's at a place where he's ready to take his life. You know, you may be uh, listening today, you may have watched today's story, and you may feel a lot like Ed. You may feel like my life is not worth living, I don't want to live any longer. Uh, let me stop you right here. Let me just tell you that you did not watch this story by accident. God wanted you to hear it. God wanted you to see it. God has a plan for you, and it's an amazing plan. And we've got to stop the lies that are going on right now in your head. I'm going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking that you would arrest the heart of any and all people that have heard or watched this story today that are contemplating the ending of their life. God, you've got a plan, and it's a good plan for them. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. You know, today's challenge reminds us that life is not easy and life is actually very painful. And if you're like Ed, reach out to somebody like he did. Be willing, there is somebody in your sphere of influence that will be there for you. Reach out to them. You may be the person that uh, Ed reaches out to. My challenge to you is be sensitive to those around you. There are hurting people all around us. And if you can be that person that reaches out to the person that's desperate, then do that. I pray that this story ministered to you, gave you hope, inspired you, and challenged you, and most importantly, reminded you that life is worth living. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you.